Good afternoon. This is Robert Scribbler. It is July 16th, 2019. Thank you so much for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. So for this segment, I am going to talk about recent record breaking temperatures for June of 2019 and provide some of the global context in which this record breaking global temperature occurred. And we're, we're going to dive into this context and, and give you guys an idea what's going on globally. And I'm gonna start out by saying that, and I've been saying this now for, for a number of months, and, and I've been hinting about it for, for a number of years, but we are in a global climate crisis. It's being driven by ongoing fossil fuel burning globally. And we are now feeling the effects of that climate crisis, the first turn of the ratchet, if you will, on the Earth system, producing extreme weather events, sea level rise, accelerated damage to a number of systems that we as human beings depend upon, such as ocean health, corals, forests, and, and many other structures are, are now at risk, including various areas in which food is, is grown and various outdoor areas where humans make their livelihood in, in certain regions of the world. The, these areas are threatened by extreme weather events and extreme heat as well as sea level rise that threaten human habitability and working ability in those zones. Now this first turning of the ratchet for the global climate crisis comes as global temperatures have hit a range of around 1.1 degrees Celsius above average uh, globally, above 1880s averages globally. And this threshold, this, this climate threshold is, is really, in my opinion, the first major climate threshold in the range of about one degree Celsius. And other major climate thresholds will be reached if we hit 1.5 degrees Celsius, two degrees Celsius, three degrees Celsius warming, uh, global heating, and so on. But it's important to emphasize the fact that, that the climate crisis is underway and we've turned the ratchet once already. And if we keep burning fossil fuels, we're going to turn the ratchet again and again and again, locking in more harmful effects. Now, this graphic that I'm looking at right now is provided by NASA GISS, and it shows the global trend with regards to June temperatures. And as you can see, June of 2019 was the record hottest June, beating out 2016 as the previous hottest June on record, and also beating out the El Nino year of 1998. So, and as you can see, the upward trend is in, in global temperatures is, is, is very apparent in this graph. And we have seen a recent acceleration or apparent acceleration in global temperatures. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. Overall for 2019 so far, 2019 is tracking at around second hottest on record for the first half of the year. And according to climate scientists, such as uh, Dr. Gavin Schmidt, who is the head of NASA GISS, we are currently tracking in the range of second, third, or fourth hottest on record for 2019. The data is leaning a little bit closer to second or third hottest on record. There, there's a, a slight chance that we could see a hottest year on record for 2019. And there is a more than 99% chance that 2019 will be one of the top five hottest years on record. I just like to go ahead and look at some of the geospatial anomaly data provided by NASA GISS. And looking at the global map, you can see that 
Most of the globe experienced above average temperatures. This, this is an anomaly map showing temperature, temperature departures from normal, hotter than normal temperatures showing up in yellow, orange, and red, cooler than 20th century, mid 20th century average temperatures showing up in blues and purples. And as you can see, much of the Earth experienced above average to far above average temperatures for this period with hot spots showing up over Europe, which experienced a, a very hot June, the Arctic region as well, which show, showed a much above average June and other hot spots showing up in parts of South America and near West Antarctica as well. So just a, a visual picture of the distribution of high temperature anomalies. Looking at the zonal averages by latitude, we find that much of the excess temperatures, the, the hotter than normal temperatures, showed up in the upper latitude zones of the northern hemisphere during June. This is a, 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 bit, a, a bit out of the ordinary. You tend to see anomalies drop off in the higher latitude zones in the northern hemisphere as we start to get into summer. But this particular June showed anomalies really pushing up uh, above typical values. We saw a, a very large ridge running through Alaska and injecting a lot of heat into the Arctic through that zone. Uh, there were other large ridge zones running in through Europe, for example, which injected a lot of heat northward. And we'd see this showing up in the global uh, um, zonal anomaly maps. So there are a number of impacts that we are seeing from the climate crisis starting to become apparent. And I, I could go through a very long list. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to provide you with a, a truncated list of some of the impacts that we are now seeing. But it's worth noting that the extreme weather impacts related to climate change, the extreme heat impacts, the extreme storm impacts, the glacial melt impacts, the impacts to sensitive biological systems like corals, the news of those impacts occurs on, on a daily and sometimes an hourly basis. So tracking the global cl climate crisis right now is a, a real job for global media. I'm not certain that global media has fully stepped up to the job, but there has been a lot better reporting overall on the global climate crisis during recent years. So overall, over the past century, as we said, before heat trapping pollution has forced the world to warm by about 1.1 degrees Celsius. This warming is, a, is about one quarter the difference between the Holocene or, or the period in which human civilization arose and an ice age, but on the side of hot. So imagine all of the cold that occurs in an ice age and flip that over to hot and we are one quarter of the way there to, to producing a warming equivalent to the cooling that is produced during an ice age. If, if four degrees Celsius cooling relative to Holocene values produce, produces an ice age, I guess four degrees Celsius warming relative to the Holocene averages would produce a, a hothouse or a relative hothouse state uh, relative to, to what we are used to. It, it feels kind of like a hot house now, in any case, in the Washington DC area where heat indexes has, have regularly risen above 100 degrees over recent days with uh, high temperatures and extraordinarily high humidity combining to, to make it miser pretty miserable around here, especially if you don't have air conditioning. And uh, my air conditioning was, was recently uh, knocked out. So um, I've been experiencing this a little bit more than, than I typically would. Now, seas over, uh, oceans overall have risen by about an average of 17 centimeters since 1900, and the rate of sea level rise at present has accelerated to around 3.5, 3.6 millimeters per year. Nine trillion tons of ice, which is roughly equivalent to 9,000 mountains, a billion tons of ice has a, has a volume of about one cubic kilometer. So imagine 
9,000 cubic kilometers of ice melting into the oceans. And that's what we have already seen due to the global heating that we have already experienced. Wildfires in the US now burn twice the number of acres that they did 30 years ago. This, this doubling feature is kind of a litany as we've also seen flood events which are, are now more than twice as frequent as they were during the 1980s. Strong hurricanes have about doubled in frequency in the North Atlantic over a similar period. And the Arctic sea ice is, is in full retreat relative to averages even seen during the 1981 to 2010 period which captures a period in which sea ice is melting. In particular, it's worth pointing out that Arctic sea ice during the record June period and running into July has hit near record low extent values and record low extent values running in through, through June and early July. And the, these are record low daily averages. So as you can see in this graph, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add some more data points with the orange line showing up as 2011 and the red line showing up as 2018 and the yellow line showing up as 2017. So as you can see with this blue line here, we are trending toward near record low or record low sea ice daily values throughout June and July. And the present trend is below the record low levels set in 2012 does not mean we will see a new all-time record low set in September of 2019, but this is something that we need to keep an eye on. Now, looking at the Arctic from the satellite shot, I just, I just wanted to show you yet one more indicator of the global climate crisis and, or a couple more indicators of the global cri climate crisis and that involves wildfires around the Arctic. And as you can see by this thermal anomalies indicator, we are showing wildfires in Eastern Siberia and above the Arctic Circle in, in Eastern Siberia, in Central Siberia below the Arctic Circle, but still in the very far Northern latitude region, as well as in Alaska. And we'll go ahead and zoom in on some of these wildfires so you can see the uh, smoke plumes and just the overall smoky nature of the Arctic Circle and near Arctic Circle environment. We've got this one wildfire burning south of Barrow, Alaska, producing a pretty clear, clearly indicative plume in the satellite image. This is running in at about 68 degrees north latitude, which is above the Arctic Circle here. And just looking at some of these wildfires burning in eastern Siberia, we can note a, a rather intense nature for these wildfires burning at around 67 degree north latitude, 67.5 degrees north latitude, which are also above the Arctic Circle. These intense northern wildfires are a feature that we have tended to see year after year, as the Arctic has tended to warm up with the wildfires creeping closer and closer to the Arctic Ocean as the Arctic has experienced these, these record warm temperatures or near record warm temperatures. Another indicator, as I noted earlier, is Arctic sea ice loss. And as you can see in the East Siberian Sea, we have uh, quite broken ice packs with blue water visible between the, the cracks in the ice flows, large polinias, large broken areas of ice also running in through the Beaufort Sea. And this is in conjunction with the large influxes of heat that we saw running through Alaska in June, pushing temperatures in parts of Alaska above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And this heat continued to telegraph on north into the Arctic Ocean environment. At present, uh, the Arctic Ocean is becoming a bit more stormy, which would tend to increase the overall albedo effect or reflectivity effect of the Arctic Ocean. And we'll see if this has an effect on sea ice, a, a, a defensive effect. But, but at present, we're, we're tracking in around record low values. Now, the primary driver 
of the climate crisis is fossil fuel burning related carbon emissions, which have pushed atmospheric carbon dioxide levels now above 411 parts per million in the global average, according to NOAA ESRL. I'm showing you this uh, one graphic provided by Climate, Climate Central, which is an excellent resource for climate change, climate crisis related data. And the reason why I'm showing you this data point is to show it in reference to the past 800,000 years. And the reason why we can have a very clear understanding of how much carbon dioxide there was in the atmosphere over the past 800,000 years is we can actually drill ice cores from ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica and get the air bubbles that are captured in those ice sheets and in, in these ice cores and, and directly know how much carbon dioxide was in the atmosphere during these periods. And, and as you can see, the highest historical period in this 800,000 year record provided by the ice cores is around 300 parts per million. So, so the present values are around 37% higher than they had ever been in the past 800,000 years. It's based on other proxy data, it, it appears likely that atmospheric carbon dioxide values are high, about as high as they were at least 3 million years ago and possibly as long ago as 15 million years ago. And this elevated atmospheric carbon dioxide level combines with other greenhouse gases like methane and nitrous oxide to provide the heat forcing that we are seeing around the globe today. And I'm just gonna show you some images from NOAA's Earth System Research Laboratory showing the average global atmospheric CO2 ranging around 410, 411 parts per million. And, and this is an extraordinary measure of, of heat trapping gas. Now, combining with other heat trapping gases, we get an atmospheric carbon dioxide equivalent in the form of a greenhouse gas index provided by NOAA. NOAA's Earth System Research Laboratory. And as of 2018, that carbon dioxide equivalent was 496 part per parts per million. Looking at present atmospheric increases in carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases such as methane, the equivalent for 2019 is likely in the range of 499 parts per million. So we're rapidly approaching the 500 part per million carbon dioxide equivalent heat forcing level, which, which is a, a pretty ominous threshold to me. So again, the global heating crisis primarily driven by fossil fuel burning, but also driven, also contributed to, uh, and, and carbon dioxide, related carbon dioxide increases, as shown in the blue line here, but also contributed to by methane, which is indicated as an addition in the red line, and I'm sorry, uh, uh, methane and other greenhouse gases, which is also indicated here by the, the red line. So June itself was the hottest we have ever seen in the 139 year global climate record. And as I mentioned before, global temperatures are unfortunately rapidly increasing. It also appears that July of 2019, according to statements by climate scientists as reported in The Guardian, has a 50% chance to be the hottest July on record and the hottest month ever recorded because July is the hottest month for the Earth system globally. So, so following June, we're going to have to look at July. So to sum up, June was the hottest June ever recorded in the global climate record. We are seeing the impacts of global climate change in the form of the climate crisis at present. And as long as we continue to burn fossil fuels, this crisis will continue to worsen. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.